It might not look like much, but this $35 assembly of electronics is a fully functioning computer. There's the ARM chip right here, tons of USB ports, an Ethernet port, even an HDMI port. With this teeny little thing, you can do just about anything. Released in 2012, the Pi has inspired near-religious devotion among geeky hobbyists and inventors. Some of them show off their Pi creations at things called Raspberry Jams. I went to see David Pride, who has a shrine to the low-cost personal computer at his home in Gloucester. What is this little device meant to you? It's changed my life. I was very happy, very stable. I had a nice, well-paid job, but I was very, very bored. And I realized at that point, if I wanted to do something different, this was, this was the opportunity to learn the skills that I'd always wanted to learn. Electronics, robotics, coding. His house is littered with Pi creations, from motorized cars to robots. Greetings to everyone watching Hello World. <laughs> That's a nice touch. <laughs> His most famous invention, though, is the Forbot, an AI-infused machine that plays a mean, albeit slow, game of Connect Four. That is cool, man. <laughs> How long did it take you to make this? About three months of evenings and weekends. Connect4 is actually quite a complex game. There's an awful lot of mathematics behind the AI that runs the system. So it makes it you, you Oh, make, now I have to go. You make your move. But it is now thinking about the move it's taken. Oh, you bastard. You've just lost. I feel ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should have done more for the humans. To really understand the soul of the Raspberry Pi, I had to head to its birthplace in Cambridge and dig deep into the city's traditions. This meant humiliating myself through something called punting, which is like canoeing, except dumber and more frustrating. Whoa. All right. Whoa, dude. Did so you pull it all the way out? Yeah, yeah. How do people do this, man? <laughs> It's pretty intuitive. <laughs> My punting coach is Eben Upton. Easy. He's the Cambridge computer scientist who invented the Pi. Around 2007, Eben grew alarmed by the declining number of computer science students in England and decided to try and inspire the youngsters with a new approach. I've always assumed Cambridge is the best place in the world to study computer science, and certainly the best place in the UK. And we saw this collapse in the number of people applying to study computer science at the University of Cambridge. Which is crazy, as the computing industry is blowing yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, the computing industry is blowing up. Obviously, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful environment to come, and, to come and study in. The theory we came up with was that um, most of us who were arriving in the mid-90s, like I did, had grown up with cheap, programmable 8-bit microcomputers. You grew up using the BBC Micro. I grew that's up with, what got you into computing. Yeah, that's computer. it. I had a BBC Micro at school. It sat in the corner of the classroom. And those were beautiful machines. Supported by the UK government, the BBC Micro gave many students their first taste of coding and the possibility of what computers could do. I'm just going to scroll up. The Pi has very much followed in this tradition and emerged as a consumer hit along the way. It's now the third best-selling computer of all time, behind the Mac and the PC. Our lifetime dream volume was 10,000 units, now we're closing in on 10 million. But as that's happened, we've just got more ambitious, we've just got more greedy, I guess, about what we're trying to accomplish. We've gone from, can we move the needle from 200 to 600 people applying to computer science at Cambridge, to, yeah, can we do the same for other universities? Can we do the same for other countries? Can we do the same for other subjects? Think big, Jason Statham impersonator. Think big. <laughs> 